Hi everyone and thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to be making a fun fold card using a die from In Love Arts and I actually have several card making dies, some from In Love Arts, some from Sizzix and I'm going to be using them over the next few months because I have decided that it's time for me to start using some of my craft supplies that I haven't used in a long time or maybe even haven't used at all. And for those of you that don't use dies, I'm not going to forget about you. And you'll probably still get some great card making ideas from these videos. So let's head on over to the craft table and get started. The papers I'll be using are from Prima Marketing's Wild and Free collection and Rose Quartz collection. And all of the dies that I'm using are from In Love Arts. And of course, I'll be using a few other products as well. And there will be links below to everything, including a 25% off discount code to In Love Arts should you decide to shop there. Okay, let's get started. So for the beautiful cards I'm going to be showing you today, this is the die that I use to make them. And I'm going to tell you right off that In Love Arts has the most unique names for their dies. And this particular one happens to be called the Creative Foldable Photo Album Die. And I'm not quite sure why, but I can tell you that I love it. And you just use this with your Gemini or your Cuddlebug or your Big Shot or whatever die cutting machine you use. And this not only cuts it, but it gives you the score lines as well. So once you've put it through there, all you have to do is start folding. And this is what it's going to look like. So as you can see, there are cut marks and there are score marks. And there are different ways to fold this, but we're gonna start with this particular way. So what you're gonna do is starting from the left side, see how this is skinnier? You can see like this, there's not much space right there. We're over here, there's a lot of space, okay? You're gonna start right here, and that is going to be a mountain fold. And you're just gonna keep going down and all of those first lines and I used a really thick cardstock for this and didn't even bring my bone folder, but all of those score lines are going to be mountain folds, okay? All of the first ones that you come to. And also they're really hard to see on white. Okay, now the next ones are going to be a valley fold. Now for me, it's easier to just turn it over and do it this way. And so all of these are now mountain folds if you're doing it this way and there we go and I should have brought my bone folder but I did not okay so turn it over and this is what it looks like now there's something interesting if you notice this sticks out on this side and I wasn't really crazy about that. Now it's not really bad because it doesn't show, you know, when your card is opened up. It only shows when it's closed, but it bothered me a little bit. And the other little thing, because I'm going to show you the glitches. One thing you will learn about me if you don't know already is I'm really honest about things. So when I use something or review it, you are getting an honest opinion. And I love this, even with these couple of little glitches. So the other little glitch is this will fit in an A2 size envelope, but actually it is just a little bit too long. Instead of being four and a fourth, it's four and a half. And I'm gonna grab a little piece here that I had to cut off one of my cards. This is just a tiny little strip. So if you're not happy with the size, just cut a fourth of an inch off from this side. But it will, the way it is, still fit in the envelope, just really snug. But what I did when I made the card that I'm going to show you right now, which is this beautiful card right here. I'm going to turn it over, see if you can see it. <laughs> Can't see it really well, but I've cut a strip of matching cardstock and I glued it to the front so that it came out just right to the edge of that. And that way it doesn't show. And then I added this bling down the side. 
Now, where did that go? Let me find it here really quick. I just got this at, at the Dollar Tree. So they call it Diamond Wrap, and it's really awesome. So cheap stuff. You can also put ribbons. You can do border, um, you know, border trims, whatever you want. Or you can leave it like that. But this is an absolutely beautiful card that I made. And I don't know if it shows up, but the butterflies have, hold on here, Sparkle Mod Podge. I love Mod Podge and I love Sparkle. I know it's not focusing here. There you go. It's Sparkle Mod Podge. And those butterflies are not even from the same set. These are just odds and ends butterfly dies that I had that I created those with and added a little bling to them. And then on the inside of the steps here, if I can show you there, I put those little labels and I um, stamped and embossed, you know, some little words and phrases on them. Now, I have to show you these labels because I love this set so much. I mean, absolutely love it. And not all of it has been taken apart yet because I've only used a few of them so far. But look at all these different labels. They're stitched. They are so beautiful. Every every design, you know, every every design you can think of. Just look at these. They're just beautiful. This is the one that I used because I thought it was perfect. But it's not the only one that fits on the steps. This one fits on the steps as well. And I just wanted you to see those. And those are called practi practical label frames. And they are label frames and they are practical. So I guess In Love Arts did a good job naming those. But oh my gosh, can you just imagine all of the uses for those? I love, love, love those. And so I wanted to show that to you. And that is just, that's one card. Now let's get on to another one. Okay, so I showed you this fold with the tab sticking out on that side. Now I'm going to show you this fold with the little stair step sticking out on this side. And again, it, you don't see it when it's opened, only when it's closed. So how did I get that on the bottom instead of on the top? Well, let's look at this. This is the skinny side coming down. I'm going to call that an L. Okay, now I'm going to turn this over and there we go. So we have the exact same skinny side coming down, but instead of starting off doing mountain folds, which is what we did on, on this one, we're doing valley folds. And instead of these being valley folds like they were on this one, these are mountain folds. So you do valley and mountain, valley, mountain, valley, and mountain, and then you turn it around and there you go. So what does that look like? Let me show you. There we go. Isn't that just beautiful? And it's okay that that sticks out because it's only momentary because once the person gets it, it's going to be standing up. And I just love all the possibilities on this. Again, I use those same labels. For the stairs right here, I'm calling them the stairs. I don't know what to call them. They look like stairs to me, but I use those labels for that. And this right here is this die right here. And what is the name of that? It is called an arc heart frame. And it is an arc. And I guess it could be a frame. <laughs> But I love it because it's like using half of a doily. And so I just thought that was really beautiful to use there. Um, as for the Eiffel Tower die, I've had it for a long time. Don't know where I got it. And um, same with most of these things. If I don't remember where I got them because I keep them, you know, stored on magnetic sheets, then I'm not going to be able to give you links. And I know a lot of the companies that I have um, dies and stamps from have either gone out of business or it's not available anymore but there's some more of those butterflies I had just made a whole bunch of them at one time so I put them on here as well 
and a beautiful border die with the ribbon going through it. I just love the way it came together. It is so beautiful. So now you've seen two different ways to do these and I'm going to show you another one. And now I'm going to show you how to use that same die to make a five and a half inch square card. So to do that, I took an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of cardstock and I cut it in half. And then I cut a half inch off the end of that so that I have an eight inch by five and a half inch piece of cardstock. Now, as you can see, that piece of cardstock is longer than the die, and also it is exactly the width of the die. And so, what you're going to do is you are going to have your cardstock, if it has a pattern on it, facing the correct direction, the way that you want it. Okay, and I'm going to set that down for a minute. And now I'm going to turn this this direction instead of just turning it around for you. So you can see right here, this is a skinny section and this is a wide section, okay? Keeping it that way as you turn it over, you are gonna take this end, the wide end, and you are going to put it flush with the end of that cardstock, leaving this sticking out. And then we are going to turn it over like this, and that way we can make sure that the die is covered so that nothing slips off. And we are going to put it, like I said, this is so the die is now face up. We're going to set this down and this is going to be hard for me to show you, but we want this to hang off the edge of this. So I'm going to try to sit it on here and show you that you want the die and this is hard to do on camera. So wish me luck here. Let me try it again. You want the die to hang off the end of this. You do not want the die all the way on there, okay? So you want it hanging off the end. And with everything lined up, we are going to run it through here. Okay? And you don't have to go all the way through. You don't want to, okay? Doesn't matter, just bring it back through. I'm doing that especially on camera because it's hard to reach around everything. And now, when we lift this off, we have it done. Now, see there's like little straggly pieces from the edges? What you're going to do is just take that to your paper trimmer and just clean that right off. And then it will be ready to fold. So I'm not going to decorate the card on camera, but I'll show it to you when I'm done. But I just had to show you some of the cutest dies I use to make the embellishments. And one of them is this adorable um, ice cream cone die set. It comes with the base so that you know exactly you know where to put your pieces. It comes with the cone, the ice cream, a little circle for the cherry, and a little itty bitty tiny circle in case you wanted to put some little dots on it. And they just make the cutest little ice cream cones. Aren't those just adorable? And another thing I used is these are little banner dies with alphabets. And they're hard to see, you know, what they are um, like this. See the B, C, and the D. And these haven't been taken apart yet. But down here I use these letters to create this banner with my granddaughter's name on it. And isn't that just the cutest and so easy to do with these banner dies? And so I just wanted to share that with you. And of course, these are also from In Love Arts, and I will have links below in the description box. Sorry, the lighting has changed. The sun is going down. But I wanted to quickly share the finished card with you. So here it is. I added the ice cream cones right here. And... For this cupcake and that one, what I did was 
I cut them out of another piece of the same cardstock and then I used Sparkle Mod Podge on them and foam adhesive dots to pop them up. And there is the banner and happy birthday. And then on the back to hide the twine from the banner, that is where I put the sentiment and signed it. And I think this just came out perfect for our granddaughter's birthday. Thank you all for stopping by today, and I just want you to know how much I truly appreciate all of your comments and your thumbs up. And also, be sure to check below in the description box for links that might be of interest to you. And there's also going to be links to some of my videos that might be of interest to you, and they will be popping up on the screen as my video is ending. Have a blessed day, and happy crafting, everyone. Bye-bye. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, I hope you consider that, too. And if you do, be sure to click the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos or giveaways. And I hope you stop by Crafters Castle on Facebook and also Crafters Castle Challenge Blog to enter your creations.